Well, tonight, the family of Tyree Nichols held a press conference at the Mason Temple Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. That is the same place where 55 years ago, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his final speech, which like all of his speeches was really a sermon, to a standing room only crowd on the final night of his life, the night before he was assassinated. That night, Dr. King said, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will and be, and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land and I am happy tonight. Martin Luther King was 39 years old. No one was happy tonight in that same place where Martin Luther King delivered his final speech. The theme of Dr. King's final speech was simple and delivered in the shortest sentence in his speech 55 years ago when he said, the issue is injustice. That was the issue tonight on that same stage with five police officers now accused of the murder of Tyree Nichols, who was 29 years old when he was being beaten to death by and by those, by those police officers and calling for his mother less than 100 yards from his mother's home. Tonight, Tyree Nichols' stepfather said this. One thing I can say this evening is going to be sweet as short. Keep fighting for justice for our son and my family. Protect my wife because she's very fragile right we now. Yeah. We need that for her. Trust me. And I need it too. That's right. So, like I said, it's going to be short tonight because uh, we got a long fight ahead of us. That's right. Yeah. And we got to stay strong for it. Mm -hmm. So, justice for Tyree. 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 Reverend Al Sharpton said this at the press conference There's nothing that you can say that can explain what we saw right. on that videotape. Right. Talk, right. In fact, what you say may make it premeditated. Come on, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Come on, Upgrading yes, charges. Yes, sir. So Come on, now. running your mouth. Come on, now. Yeah. And you'll be running the charges up. Come on, now. Yeah. Run them up. Because we don't care what you say. We know what we saw. That's right. And Tyree should not have been treated like that. That could have been any one of us. Yeah. It's her son and his stepson. It could have been mine. One of the members of the legal team uh, supporting the family now, Memphis attorney Van Turner, said this. You don't have to be trained to be a decent human being. You don't have to go through police procedures to know if a man is sitting there slumping down that you got to render aid to him That's right. so that he can live. That's right. I'm not a police officer and I know that. And Tyree Nichols' brother, Jamal Dupree, said this. My brother was the most peaceful person you ever met right. in your life. Most. He's never lifted a finger to nobody. Never raised his voice to nobody. If my brother was here today and if he had to say something, he would tell us to do this peacefully. The New York Times is reporting that, as usual in cases like this, the written police report of the incident does not match what we see on video. The New York Times reports a police report written hours after officers beat Tyree Nichols was starkly at odds with what videos have since revealed, making no mention of the powerful kicks and punches unleashed on Mr. Nichols and instead claiming that he was violent. The police report painted Mr. Nichols, 29, who died three days after the January 7th beating as an irate suspect who had started to fight with Memphis police officers, even reaching for one of their guns. The videos, which were released last week, showed nothing of the sort. Instead, they captured police officers yanking Mr. Nichols from a car, threatening to hurt him, and then, after he ran away, catching up with him and inflicting the deadly beating. All the while, it appears from the videos, Mr. Nichols never struck back. It was the latest instance nationwide in which video evidence, whether from body camera footage or a bystander's cell phone, offered a starkly different account of police violence 
from what officers had reported themselves.